What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Johnny Finesse. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're about to watch why the NBA knows the Air Fox is up next. If y'all didn't know about me, my favorite team is the Kings. I've been the Kings since I was a youngin', but we haven't been winning. But the Air Fox is stepping it up. He's putting all star numbers up. So he was one of the all star snubs, in my opinion. But he's going crazy. He's going crazy these last couple games, man. He's been going crazy. So you're about to see why. De'Aaron Fox is up next. If you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 750 subscribers, y'all. I need y'all to hit that sub button and the bell notifications, too, so you don't miss a thing again. With that being said, let's get into it. You saw De'Aaron Fox in the NCAA yep. tournament. You saw what he did against Lonzo. That's the point. I see that. He Why are you taking that, Lonzo? Who might be the hottest player in the NBA right now? He's been one of the best players in the NBA this year. See, look. See, look. 23 points, but, like, 30 is the new 20. Like, that's, that's a sad Defensively, part he like, is tenacious. This kid is a competitor. He doesn't care who he's going to be paid up against. I'm watching De'Aaron Fox in Sacramento. Oof. And I'm seeing this brother, and he's just special. All the hard work paid off for the time being. Fulfill my dream of making it to the NBA. Now, you know, you want to be a star. You want to be a name. This shit, man. Uh, on the Fox, that's a mismatch. That's a mismatch. Fox he's going to be a body. To work. <laughs> that's light. You can't complain on the rotation. On the day of the 2017 NBA draft, all eyes were on two promising young point guards. With the first overall pick, the 76ers chose Markel Fultz and thought they landed themselves a young superstar. With pick number two, the Lakers chose Lonzo Ball, a player Magic Johnson would introduce to the world by telling him, quote, don't break all of my records. An out there statement <laughs> looking back, to say the least. Especially when you consider that a player who has already proven himself to be better than both Fultz and Ball, a player who has no begun cap. to show real star potential in this league, would be taken by the Sacramento Kings with pick number five. Yes, just this past week, De'Aaron Fox put on a show and was named the Western Conference Player of the Week. And by the end of this video, you'll see why I fully believe De'Aaron is on his way to becoming one of the best point guards in the NBA. You'll see proof that De'Aaron Fox is actually on a historic pace when it comes to his fourth season stats, and you'll see why he, he has keeps a chance improving of every year. A real like, NBA that's the thing about star. Fox. So what's up guys, Mike here? And yes, this is a big statement, but I have some big time stats and proof to pack this statement up. Again, trust me, as we go on, you will be amazed at what De'Aaron Fox has already accomplished in his young career. And I've got to say, when it comes to the attention that guys like Trey and Ja are getting, I feel like De'Aaron is being somewhat slept on. If you agree with that statement, well then, let's end that today. And if you don't, well, I'm sure you'll enjoy listening as I hype up De'Aaron Fox with some rock solid stats. Before we continue, though, I do want to mention two things. One, I have officially started a podcast with Flight Mike and Get Like Coop. Our podcast is called Laced Up, and the first episode is out right now. I'm going to link that first episode in the description. I'm going to pin a comment with that first episode. Please, guys, go check out the first episode of Laced Up, and make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn post notifications on if you're new. By the way, to celebrate the beginning of Laced Up, we are giving away a PS5 or Xbox Series X to someone who is subscribed and has post notifications on so make sure to go check out laced up and let me know what you guys think i'm so excited to start podcasting but before we continue guys i'm very excited to say that this video is sponsored by doc Ooh, you don't get paid for that so you don't get paid to doctor so the best you know what i'm saying I don't get paid, so you don't get paid, and 7.2 assists per game on nearly 49% shooting from the field. Very solid numbers, to say the least. So solid, in fact, that when we look throughout NBA history, we find that only three other players have ever averaged 24 points and 7 assists per game at the age of 23. All three of those players are Hall of Famers, and their names are Tiny Archibald, Oscar Robertson, and LeBron James. So right away, we can see that in year four, De'Aaron Fox is putting himself in some elite company. But What's even more impressive is that just like his career as a whole, which we're going to get into, including his early battles with Lonzo, so stick around because those games were awesome. But anyway, just like his early career as a whole, De'Aaron Fox has played dramatically better as more and more time has gone on. To no show cap. you what I mean, De'Aaron began the season by averaging a combined 21.3 points and 6.1 assists per game on 46% shooting in the 19 games he played in the months of December and January. By the time February rolled around, De'Aaron was 
playing at a new level as he put up 24.8 points and 9.3 assists on 47% shooting. And now, in the month of March, Fox has stepped up his scoring to an elite level as in 13 games, he's averaging 30 points and 6.8 assists per game yes, on 53% shooting. He's dead, no. He is, at this point in time, starting to put it all together. He is starting to take a real leap. He is displaying his full offensive arsenal. There is a reason that De'Aaron Fox was recently named Player of the Week in the Western Conference. He has been absolutely unstoppable, but really, this growth throughout the course of the season should come as no surprise. No because surprise. as I already mentioned, De'Aaron Fox has had a career-long history of proving people wrong and making dramatic improvements to his game as time goes on. He's because in recent years, we've certainly seen some very impressive rookie debuts by the game's best young guards. Guys like Ja and Trey and even Donovan Mitchell, a man who was in De'Aaron's draft class, burst onto the scene as rookies and have made a lasting impression. The same could not really be said about De'Aaron Fox because sure, Fox had a good rookie season, but with averages of 11.6 points per game and 4.4 assists per game, De'Aaron was not even named to either of the all-rookie teams as guys like Lonzo and Dennis Smith Jr. took his place. Going yeah. further here, but De'Aaron yeah, was no, not even no originally way. chosen for the Rising Stars game that year. He okay. only made the roster as a replacement for Lonzo Ball, who had a knee injury and couldn't play. So, to say that De'Aaron Fox was underlooked at this point may have been an understatement. However, he did show some flashes of greatness and his potential, combined with his work ethic and a chip on his shoulder, have certainly made him the player he has become today. And who exactly is that? Well, as we all know, Fox is incredibly fast and is an absolute terror in transition. This athleticism yeah. has led to some jaw-dropping highlight plays, but when it comes to Fox's efficiency, that is really where we can see his growth and we can find why he is such a great NBA player. Because right now, the thing that sets De'Aaron apart from all of the other point guards in the NBA they is his Halliburton finishing at the rim. Like, As we can I'm see excited. on cleaningtheglass.com, Fox it currently now, ranks bro. first among all NBA point guards at field goal percentage at the rim with a 71% finishing percentage. That field goal percentage is 71% at the rim is absolutely ridiculous. To give you an example of just how crazy that is, that is guys like Steph Curry and John Morant finish 63% of their shots at the rim, while someone like like Trey Young, well, he only finishes 55% of his shots at the rim. De'Aaron, meanwhile, has a percentage that is up there with some of the game's best big men. And on top of his finishing at the rim, De'Aaron has also established that he is elite at drawing fouls. As this season, he currently ranks 11th in free throw attempts per game. But the problem here slash something that is actually a good thing to look forward to in the future is that if we take a look at cleaningtheglass.com again, we can see that De'Aaron shoots just 70.4% from the free throw line, which, which puts okay. him in the 16th percentile among point guards. I'm sure knowing the dedicated player he is, De'Aaron is going to grind in the offseason. He's going to get that free throw percentage up, and once Better. that happens, he'll become an even more deadly player. And speaking of deadly, De'Aaron has also proven that in the to. fourth That's quarter this point. season, he has become an assassin. That is exactly what you want out of a franchise player. You want someone who wants the ball in the fourth quarter, and De'Aaron, well, he needs the ball. Currently, De'Aaron ranks sixth in the entire NBA in fourth quarter scoring with 7.2 points per game, and he has more than proven that down the stretch of big games, he is capable of carrying the Kings to a win. And as we can see, as we dive deeper into these numbers, we find that a huge part of De'Aaron Fox's tremendous improvement in his offensive game comes in the form of his mid-range shot. In his first two seasons in the NBA, De'Aaron shot just 35 and 37% from mid-range. However, now, he is knocking down 44% of his shots, which already ranks him in the 71st percentile in the entire league. That type of improvement is certainly the result of some serious work ethic. However, before we talk about just how how De'Aaron Fox rose from a player ranked behind Dennis Smith Jr. to now a man who is putting up some historic fourth year stats. Let's take a look at where the chip on De'Aaron Fox's shoulder was developed. Now, it has been said that since he was a young child, De'Aaron Fox was a homebot. He didn't like going out and partying. Instead, he focused on nice. becoming the best player he could possibly become. And then, during De'Aaron's sophomore season in high school, De'Aaron finally started to get some national attention, and so he went all in on his dream of becoming an NBA player. De'Aaron's mom would say Say, quote, he says he doesn't have a backup plan because that takes away from his original plan. If you focus on what I'm going to do if, then you're not focusing on what I'm going to do to get no, where I want to go. That's it was fact. certainly that type of mindset that propelled De'Aaron Fox to become one of the best high school basketball recruits in the country, which means now let's take a look at where the chip on De'Aaron Fox's shoulder was developed. Because if you were a college basketball fan in 2018, it was impossible to miss the Lonzo Ball show and it was also in
impossible to miss the electrifying rivalry between Lonzo Ball and De'Aaron Fox. Because really, oh, in rivalry. college and early on in their That's NBA careers, this rivalry had it all. Trash talk from both sides, some incredible performances, and some wild words from De'Aaron Fox's dad that are absolutely insane. Woo! Headed into the Sweet 16 of the 2018 NCAA that. tournament, all eyes were on the Lonzo Ball De'Aaron Fox matchup. Both players were future top five picks, and they were both expected to put on a show. Now, in the regular season, Lonzo's UCLA Bruins had actually taken down Fox and Kentucky in a game that saw both players produce similar stats, but also had many saying Fox had played better. De'Aaron finished with 20 points, nine assists, and two Jeez. turnovers, compared to Lonzo's 14 points, seven assists, and six turnovers. And then after that game, LeVar Ball was quoted as saying, he can't mess with Zoe. You can have 40 points and Lonzo can have two points and make the game winner, and I'm going to go with him. You had more points, but look at who won the game. These words would come back to bite LeVar horribly, as in an amazing display of fate, De'Aaron Fox would make LeVar eat those words, because in a game that very well could be looked back at as a sign of things to come, De'Aaron Fox absolutely destroyed Lonzo and the UCLA Bruins as it was clear. De'Aaron Fox was on a mission to prove to the world that he was better than Lonzo. Lonzo would finish with 10 points and 8 assists in an 11 point loss, and De'Aaron, well, he finished with 39 points and four assists Jeez. in a game where he was simply unstoppable and after that game we got some incredible words from De'Aaron Fox's father who said quote my son already ate his up twice LeVar can say what he wants to say I just tell him to go back and watch the film that's it someone uh, please put that on a poster despite this win against Lonzo though more motivation would certainly be added to De'Aaron Fox's game in the elite eight of the 2018 NCAA tournament because in that elite game Kentucky Kentucky trailed, fought back, and then Luke May connected on this three that sent Kentucky home. After this game, understandably, De'Aaron was upset, and to me, this was a true glimpse into De'Aaron Fox's character. Because even though he was playing only one season at Kentucky, he still was so competitive and loved his team so much that he couldn't help but hysterically cry when asked about the end of his college career. That is the type of person De'Aaron Fox is, someone who truly leaves it all on the court. Lonzo was still taken ahead of De'Aaron Fox, which to De'Aaron was absolutely fine. Sure, De'Aaron did believe he should be the number one pick. When asked about Markel and Lonzo before the draft, Fox did say, quote, I feel like I'm the best. If they're drafted above me, I'm cool with it. You have to play basketball at the end of the which day, which fact. of course means who cares who goes ahead of me? I'll prove I'm better than them on the court at the end of the day. Now, it was because of these two college performances that many of us believed we were going to watch a Lonzo Ball, De'Aaron Fox rivalry for years to come. That really has not been the case as even in the Summer League, when Lonzo Ball was named the Summer League MVP, he sat in the one game the Lakers played against De'Aaron Fox's Kings. Then after that, yes, Lonzo was named to the all-rookie team over De'Aaron, but since then, De'Aaron Fox has proven that he has been on a path to stardom, while Lonzo, well, he has had a much improved season for the Pelicans this season, but compared to De'Aaron, I guess I'll go out and say it, there isn't much comparison because De'Aaron has been undisputably better. And speaking of better, every season as a player so far, Fox has has gotten better and better and the proof of his improvements are right there in front of us. Because of his work ethic, Fox has added muscle and become a better finisher around the basket. No because of his need to become the best, De'Aaron has improved his mid-range game to already make him a very dependable scorer from inside the arc. This type of improvement is no stroke of luck. For years, De'Aaron Fox Woo! has been relentless about improving his Damn, game on the court juice. and because of this, the sky for him is really the limit. The no athleticism cap. is there. The desire to win on the court is there. There, and I'm sure in the future we'll see it all. We'll see an improved three-point shot. We'll see improved playmaking. We might even see the impossible. A De'Aaron Fox led Kings. Like and it's and it's crazy too, cause our team is really nice. Cause we got Halliburton, which is a nice rookie. Buddy Hill is a good piece. Um, Harrison Barnes a good piece. The only person that we need a good piece to be is Marvin Bagley. He begin. He's a. He got glass bones, bro. He got glass bones, my nigga. He really got glass bones. Like, he, be, he he was getting injured so many times, the other teams don't want to trade him. Like, other teams don't want him because it's like he's injury prone. And he's saying, oh, it's the Kings fault. How is the Kings fault that you're getting injured? It's not It's not their fault, for real. Like, 
What are you talking about? This team making some noise in the Western Conference. Please. If anyone can make it happen, it is Deer okay, Fox. Hence, I cannot wait to see what he does next. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember, check out Dr. Squatch in the description below. And also, remember, I have just launched the first official episode of my podcast. Okay, that's the end of the video. So if you made it to the end of the video... Up. Guys, make sure to go video. check out the first episode you like of the, the podcast video. right now. I'm Subscribe sure you're going new. to enjoy it. And if you want to roll 750 subscribers,